The Florida Podcast Network, the voice of Florida. On Texploration, your trusted tour guides, Craig and David, will explore every corner of Florida for the latest tech and innovations emerging within our communities as an inside look ahead at Florida's future. Welcome to another episode of Exploration on the Florida Podcast Network. Here we are discovering all things tech and innovation thriving under the Florida sun. I'm one of your hosts, Craig. And I'm David. And we're from Clarity Creative Group, an Orlando-based digital marketing agency. Let's go. On today's episode, we are saying goodbye forever to the iPod. Goodbye, iPod. Then Caitlin Studi of South Street & Co. tells us about small business marketing solutions. And to wrap things up, We'll end the episode with our tech tip. Big news in technology, David. Something near and dear to my heart. Rest in peace, Apple iPod. The iPod gone from the face of the earth. I don't want to let it go. I never wanted to give mine up when I was like thinking about switching to like an iPhone. I was like, but then I give up my iPod. Which version resonates most with you? Personally, I had a few different iPod versions. I remember the click wheel. That was old, right? Which one was the one that you didn't want to part with? Well, so I had the iPod mini because it was really just convenient to fit like in my pocket and to like travel around with it and just be able to to have. I never had any other ones, but like I was very close. Like I had a buddy that had like the big brick one. And I remember like using that one. That was fun. But the mini one or whatever it was, 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 was my jam. It was colorful and they had all the colors. The colors were big. The The screen was big. You know, they even made multiple iterations. They had that shuffle one that was like, I think it was $9. It was so yeah, cheap. It got so cheap. It was, and so you, it was so small. But here's the real thing. Apple, the largest company on earth that puts products literally in pockets. That's what they're good at. They put products on our bodies, decided they're going to sunset the device that I believe changed their whole trajectory which it yeah i think it it changed phones right it changed it was the it's what allowed they had the technology that allowed them to evolve and the comfort level of what they were doing and they upended an industry correct and if for no other reason than to reference a michael fassbender movie because he played (laughs) steve jobs in one of the versions of one of the biopics the ipod predating the the phone, right? So the iPhone was 07, I think, but iPod was many years before that. That was the big vision he had of like the music that the Walkman or the CD thing that would always skip. I remember that. Mm -hmm. He wanted that to be seamless, effortless, and in your pocket where you could take a thousand songs with you. And the craziest thing is now we're in 2022. Our iPhone is an iPod. It's also a computer. It's also a camera. It's also, it's also so many things, so yeah. many things where the iPod and the reason we have to say goodbye to such a beautiful device that really paved the way is the iPod wasn't an it's also. Mm-hmm. And now the way tech is, the way product technology is, you're up against it if your thing, your widget, whatever, doesn't do as many things as possible. And I think the iPhone is that current generation and I, I, you know, Galaxy's fine and the Google Pixel does the same stuff. But the modern day smartphone took into account every piece of technology before it and tried to figure out how it could all be in one. Yeah. Well, and but I, I, I wonder if the Samsung or the Google phone or the Android version of a phone would even uh, would have came to be without what the technology was with the touchscreen and everything like that. What a iconic, you know, very uh, nostalgic thing for us. The commercials to me were very nostalgic. Oh, where they the, brought in music, the, the, the in a music, great way. the silhouettes of just like the people. I mean, it, it like there was just so many different things that revolutionized certain types. Of, I mean, I know the iMac was known for some of its marketing and things like that, but it just kept, they did it again and they did it again. And they did it again. It's exciting, but it's kind of sad. It is bittersweet. We are grateful to all that you brought, iPod. Mm-hmm. We are just totally enamored with every bit of your legacy, but I love my iPhone and I will never again touch an iPod. And I totally understand why it has been discontinued. <laughs> we are absolutely 
delighted to have Caitlin Studi, owner and creative director of South Street & Co., an amazing Central Florida digital marketing company. David and I are jazzed. We actually know Caitlin personally, and we can't wait to dive in and kind of poke and ask some questions and literally get to nerd out on all things marketing. Because some of our guests, again, great guests. We love our people, but they don't always have that marketing background. Caitlin, we're so excited to have you. I mean, I like starting from the, the beginning, you got this going, what, eight years ago and kind of rocket shipped all the way to dozens of clients, all these websites. What got you excited about marketing specifically? Yeah, thanks for that intro. I'm so excited to be here with you all and to catch up with you. So um, yeah, it started in 2014. But even before that, I studied marketing at UCF and got out, looked for a job everywhere except for Orlando, ended up finding one here. And believe it or not, I found my first job on Craigslist and lived to see (laughs) another day. (laughs) I love that. I love that. Probably, yeah. yeah, probably don't go there again. But, <laughs> right? Yeah. I know. Stay away. Just kidding. But yeah, so I found my first job on Craigslist. It was for a local dermatology group. And um, part of my job was digital marketing. The other part was being a liaison for the doctors who did refer or who could refer. And then in the two and a half years that I was there, I helped them double in size. When I started, they had 10 offices. And when I left, they had 20, 17 in Central Florida and three out of state. And I was like, you know what? I think I can do this for other businesses because I just didn't know how much further I could take them. And um, the company wanted me to focus more on being the liaison as opposed to focusing on the digital marketing. So in February 2014, I got my first client. She introduced me to a second one. And then I got into daytime networking, leads groups and networking groups around the area. And it took me a little over a year to leave the position. But I did, and I hit the ground running, and it's been officially seven years since I left that full-time job. No, and that's amazing. Obviously, we we have a a very similar trajectory where we we kind of got things started and 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 then rolled. But one thing that, and and some of these questions are going to be total self-serving, and I appreciate you for your willingness to answer them. You've had a really wide variety of clients as we were looking through, and again, knew knew one another for years. And you know, we always hear from some other, we're always listening to other podcasts, not just this one and learning from other marketers out there throughout the country and the world. And you know, some people, you know, they niche into one thing and they'll do like only doctor websites and you have such a wide variety. Is that part of your plan? Is that something that you, you just like to help people as they come to you? Because you just said networking. And again, you don't always control who's in the group. How did you come to kind of decide who you're going to work with? Well, in the beginning, I took anyone and everyone that had money and wanted marketing help. So sure. that was <laughs> same, same. Yes, that was definitely not a strategy. But now we're focusing on service based companies. So uh, tree trimmers, doctors, attorneys, uh, roofers, any of those. And we're not doing as much with um, e commerce or any product based companies. So while we don't have any verticals, it is kind of like a niche within the different categories of service-based companies. That was also because I had a lot of great experience from the dermatology group that I worked with. And I felt like I could just translate that over to help other businesses that were similar to them. Well, and you offer a wide variety. It's not just web design or logo design or SEO. You take things into the social space. You take things into consulting. And, And one of the buzzwords that just has been a topic that we talk about. We've even talked about it with other people in under other industries, automation. Mm -hmm. So are there certain things that are like favorites for you as again, that creative director, not just you owning and operating and running a a business with like a team of 10, but I think it's 10, right? Something like that close, Mm -hmm. which is impressive. Congrats. But also like, are there certain things that kind of scratch an itch for you a little more than others, almost like on a personal level, creativity wise? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm a self-proclaimed automation nerd. I've been able to automate all aspects of my business. And I realized that that's something that I could stay up all night and work on for a client. And those are kind of the things that you really want to pay attention to because that's where you're like, oh, am I working today? It doesn't feel like work because I'm so passionate about this. So automation would be one of those things, but also the strategy and just showing people how we can help them grow. So kind of being that like high level strategist, 
But, you know, I'll tell you one of the things that I've really been working on is just utilizing the incredible team members that I do have because I've been tagging them in on helping me create strategies. And I've been so blown away by their ideas. They come up with such better ideas than I do. And then we kind of like tie them together and put a bow on it. And then I'm pumped for the proposal meeting because I'm like, guess what we found from your competition? Look what we can do for you. And then if there's an opportunity to add automation into that, that's an added bonus. But I will say that it's still kind of like gaining ground and people are getting more and more used to it. It's not as mainstream as like a website design or social media is. No, and I love that you 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 shared that insight into the team because I think that was something that that for us, you know, we started just the two of us, right? And and mm-hmm. you started by yourself, similar. I was like reliant on myself or reliant on yeah. David. We're having those team members kind of took it to another level, but honing in on on automation, right? So many small business owners in our experience, and I kind of want to ask if you feel the same way, they struggle because time is what they never yes. have, right? Yes. They literally run out of time. So are there any tips you could give a small business owner? Because maybe they're too early in the journey to actually work with an agency, but know that their time is what their bottleneck is. Is there anything that you could think of that might help them? Yes. So because I didn't figure out how to clone myself, this is my solution, (laughs) (laughs) which is automation. So it's really, really hard to kind of put yourself in that mindset, but you have to think actively, what am I doing over and over that I could potentially automate? So I'll give you an example. Whenever a, whenever someone applies to our website on our careers page, it automatically sends them an auto email, thanking them for applying and also potentially ask them questions based on what the position was that they applied for. But not only that, it adds them to our project management software and it sends me a sub task for me to review them. And in that main task, it adds all of their information from the form that they filled out. So name, phone number, resume link, LinkedIn link. And then that way I don't, my email doesn't get clogged with applications or other things. I can just automate that process to how it works for me. But I didn't think about that until I really started realizing, holy cow, okay, I'm getting so many emails. How can I kind of filter through these in a better way? And I'm always in my project management software. And that that to me is like checking something off my to-do list is like golden. That's the one thing that I love. Good feeling. It's a good feeling. (laughs) I had late tasks because I was out of town and I just got above water, if you will. I just got out of late. And I was sharing that high five moment with David. You you mentioned project management software. So we we use one as well. We we use teamwork. Is, is there uh-huh. a specific one that you like? Or maybe again, you might be on a your second or third by now. Who knows? Because you've grown so much. But back to that original, like the small business owner that's on their own could probably mm-hmm. still benefit from one. Do you think there's one that's good? Like teamwork, I at least feel like works best because we have multiple people, right? Yeah. But mm-hmm. is there one that you think could help that sole operator at least organize because you, you, that automation level where literally that email comes in and it's pre-populating in your task management, nothing gets lost that way. Exactly. And you know what? That's what I really use automation for too. But um, to answer your question, yes, we use Asana for our project management. And I will tell you that I thought I was using Asana well. And then I went to a conference for other agency owners and this lady that is totally killing it in the, the agency world. She specializes in healthcare marketing. She shared her Asana with me and my mind was blown. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to reevaluate everything. That's She's awesome. using like goals and portfolios and all of these other things that I had no idea that Asana could do. So I have just sat down and kind of tasked one of my team members that loves organization too to look into that. But I believe Asana has a free version. And to go back to your original question too, what can other, what can business owners um, benefit from in addition to automation would be there's probably a program for whatever you're doing manually. So we, we both use the same invoicing software, which I freaking love. Love, FreshBooks is amazing. We use a review software. You and I, we worked together and used um, Markup, which is a program mm-hmm. for website edits. Oh my gosh, that was monumental. That was a big so, one. So yeah, it was just, a, a, there's a program out there to help you. And some of these programs have free versions for a limited amount of people. So that's also been pretty incredible in being able to streamline everything, but also get communication to one another effectively. For sure. And I think 
that, I mean, you nailed some of the ones that have been a big difference maker for us here. And while we use a different project management software, it's still an amazing organizational kind of thing that I'm learning about. I mean, you you already know this because you knew us kind of David's the wizard and I'm I'm kind of next to, if you will. <laughs> but me even learning like little things of what Slack can do and all the different mm-hmm. features in it. Like we take these things for granted. And I think some of the small business owners that may encounter this episode or be able to connect, but not maybe ready to retain an agency could could kill from some of these, like you just said, whether it's even FreshBooks or a payroll software solution like Augusto or a Slack or a Teamwork or Asana. And, mm-hmm. and then I wonder how many people already have, like, like you mentioned, you were using Asana well, but then you met somebody that was like killing it and you're like, oh, I'm doing things good, but I haven't even scratched the surface of what the software could do. And mm-hmm. now you know it because your your eyes have been opened up. And it's it's just one of those things that's out there that you don't necessarily even see or know until somebody tells you that maybe it's even there. You've been in the space. You don't even see it. Yeah. And I was telling my team that the other day, I was like, listen, if you see something that we could do better, let me know because I'm in it so deep. I mean, I started the company. I think, you know, one way you guys think a totally different way and you're using it totally differently than I am. So I told them, if you think that we should be doing something different, let me know. Cause I probably haven't even considered it yet because I just look at things this way because that's the way I've been doing it, but it doesn't mean it's the right way. Mm -hmm. So we had that open conversation and, um, even letting people kind of come to me with their ideas and being open to that has been so monumental because we've been able to implement things that I hadn't even thought of. Or they'll tell me, Hey, I don't think this is beneficial. And I'll say, what? I thought this was the best thing ever. And then right, I get feedback right. and they're that, like, no, this me. is a waste that's, of time. Yeah. That's me thinking things are awesome. And then the people are like, what? It's going to make yeah. everybody's life easier. And it's like, you mention it a second or third time and there's a collective groan from the room. Yeah. Or like an eye roll over Zoom when people are like, oh gosh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We covered a, a bunch of different softwares just then, a bunch of different things that, that could help a small business owner. But this is, again, a super self-serving. I'm going to poke you about social media because you crush it so hard. But before that, where do you think marketing attention is going? Like the attention, right? Like we know social media matters. We know video seems to be a thing. What for you is where you're telling those clients of yours where they might need to be spending time late 2022, 2023? Mm -hmm. It's definitely short form video. Even if you look at your feed on your personal Instagram account, you can see that Instagram's pushing reels more and more and more. And TikTok is just blowing up. I mean, personally, I'm on TikTok and I send my husband all of these like funny like animal videos and awesome. he's not on TikTok and he's just like, thanks for another video, Caitlin. I had to download it because my wife was sending me links. That's the benefit of TikTok. You don't need to download That's it. True. There's a little open button, That's at true. least on, on iPhone. And, and yes. I don't even need to have it and lets me watch it. Like, but like Facebook, you share it with somebody and they're they like, have to have it. and you have to, it opens up an app and you're like, oh, I don't have the app. Yes. No, but, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, I've shared. Okay. So we're working with one client and I saw this really funny video related to their industry and I put it. So speaking of Slack, we have a Slack channel called Inspo short for inspiration. And so we just pop things in there. If anyone can, you know, grab inspiration from it or whatever. And I saw this hilarious video about um, a fire extinguisher like going off randomly. And so we created that into a post and say saying like, if this is how your Monday starts, you need to reach out to us ASAP. But it's a great post to share, give the person credit. And then, you know, it puts a smile on people's faces because they're like, holy cow, maybe my Monday isn't as bad as that. But it's (laughs) videos like that and like shareable content. And you know what blows my mind? businesses that you would never think people would want to know about like a tree trimmer are killing it with mm-hmm. short form videos and they don't even, they don't even believe us when we're telling them yeah. i we know te- okay i'm glad i'm not crazy yeah. so you're dealing with that too like we are telling them hey people would like to see this and they're like no they don't nobody wants to see this i'm like what i'm in a boring industry Yes. Nothing is a boring industry anymore. Nothing is a boring industry. It is. It blows my mind. I was watching this tree trimming. uh, Like literally I was watching a tree trimming video and I was like, (laughs) this is so fascinating. I have to 
show this client because the bee lady. Did, did you ever think that you would ever say that? That the no. tree trimming video was very exciting. We're either no. all, all getting old or uh, this is getting hip. Yeah, I know. No, and yeah, I've definitely seen the bee lady as well. She's like another day just saving the bee. <gasps> I, it's so amazing because it's it's a multi tier kind of connection for me where I have now respect for the woman just of what she's built the Texas Bee Works or whatever no affiliate here whatsoever yeah but these, it's the way her like tone of voice and her voiceover is excellent oh. she now taught me I, I I kid you not Caitlin I am less afraid of bees because of that <laughs> I have had multiple instances okay. we've been at you weddings never li- you never liked bees he was, hated he was a, a Caitlin, bee runner true, true. He, he's a runner he's I a, used he, to literally freak out pull a shirt off and run and <laughs> I now am, have been right next to them. No freak out because I realized, wait a minute, she's not lying. She's not, she has no vested interest in lying about what she's sharing. These creatures don't want to sting me. Maybe I should stop smacking them. Yes. Yes. I love it. But it's all about, I mean, I would have never thought that I would have watched a, yeah, a tree trimming blog or a video or like a video about bees, but I don't know. You just, it's just so interesting. And I saw, I always like reading the comments cause they're hilarious most of the time. And people, one person commented on this, like uh, on a video I was watching, they were like, holy cow, I learned something new every time I watch TikTok." And I think that's why it just brings people in because you're sharing information. You're not selling, you're sharing and you're sharing stories. And I think it's so impactful. Okay. So we're talking about TikTok, So it's making me think. So two part question. Give us what social media platform is your top one for today, but then also tell me what you think the next social media or what social media platform is going to be hot. I say tomorrow, but probably like next year or probably like an hour from now. Yeah, that's so hard. So I really resisted getting on TikTok because I was like, oh, I get sucked into like the Instagram abyss. You know, Mm -hmm. you just like scroll and then click, click, click. And all of a sudden it's like, you know, 45 minutes later. TikTok, it's like two hours later. I'm like, yeah. oh, dang, where did the this time go? So my answer to what social media platform is top for me now, right now, it's TikTok. And right. honestly, um, there have been so many. There was that one, what was it called, where it was all voice and you don't really hear about it that much anymore? Clubhouse, yes. probably, right? Clubhouse yes. Is not. Yep. Yep. Clubhouse. I heard about that. I don't really know any other social sites that I think are up and coming, but I do know that Instagram is, you know, trying hard to keep up. They did the creators fund after TikTok. TikTok has Mm -hmm. added stories. They have the save feature now. So everyone's kind of just like competing for the eyeballs and the attention. When you said something that resonates pretty hard with us, that short form video as a, as a, just a whole is what's now and what's coming. So Mm -hmm. how did you feel when TikTok expanded to three minutes? And I've heard rumor that it's going to go to 10. How Mm -hmm. do you feel about that? Because again, YouTube already had long form kind of locked up, then reversed course and gave us YouTube shorts, which is, you know, varied success for that. What is your take on that? Especially again, being an agency owner, someone that's got a multitude of clients that you may have to deploy this stuff for. How do you feel about, it seems like while short form absolutely is having a moment, they're even going longer. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I can, I can say from my, from my attention span, the short form still resonates really well with me for things that I'm not as familiar with. So if someone had a three minute long B video, I don't know if I would have watched the whole three minutes, but because I know this lady, I might now. So maybe it can be looked at as though to introduce people, it should be short form. And then once you kind of have that captive audience, they want to learn more in depth. And that's where the long form videos come. But I also think that the 10 minute videos could be kind of looked at as like a QA and a session, like answering, compiling a bunch of people's questions and answers. And then people would tune in to see what question, if it was their question that they answered or things like that to get the audience more kind of interactive. And but speaking of long form video, I don't know if you all have seen um, the, the Let's Sling videos with Miss... No, oh tell gosh. me more. Yeah, keep going. Uh, I need to look her up real quick. Okay, but it's it's a video where this late Miss Dutchie. Okay, that's her name. No joke. 
Miss Duchy, <laughs> and probably, hopefully, um, now because TikTok listening to us, you guys are going to see her tonight. <laughs> yes, one hundred percent on my phone. Yes, yeah, so she has these let's sling videos, and what it is is it's this um, this cup that like a, a refillable cup that's uh, insulated, and she it goes around on this thing that spins it really slowly, and she puts drops of paint on it, so the paint kind of like. Move I have now. seen I this. Have, I didn't know. Oh my gosh! It's, been, it's been shared with me. It's she's selling out me. like crazy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, They're but cool. like her videos are live, and there's like hundreds of thousands no, you're of right. people mm-hmm. that watch Miss Duchy just sling with her, you know, cups that she decorates. And I will tell you, there was a very, very big conspiracy with this. So because P- and all of these people are tuning in and it was like a whole shebang thing on TikTok, maybe like a month or two ago, but she has her people that are like buying these cups. And right. she said, you know, the cup is almost done and she has the gold glitter or the silver glitter. And she asked, which one do you want? Well, the person said one color and all of the comments said the other color. Oh, wow. And she put the other glitter color on it and it was a huge uproar and she got so upset and the person got the cup that they didn't want the glitter color on. But people are getting super passionate about things yes. that they, they love. They get emotionally invested yes. in the content, right? Yes, but yes. It, which is, isn't that a blessing and a curse at the same time? Because, and, I'll, and transitioning this into, because I, I love where we're, we we could talk about unique TikToks, I think, all day. I know. <laughs> My wife's sending me Johnny Depp, Amber Heard stuff like crazy. Yes. That's all over TikTok. But taking into account that emotional investment of the end user and our yeah. perspective, same as yours, is like, as an agency, we got to figure out where our clients can wield that Instagram versus TikTok. If you had to produce content for only one, and I know you could repurpose and use both, but let's say a specific small business owner can only mentally handle one, where would you guide them? Oh gosh, that is such a hard question because so many people already have an Instagram account and are used to it. So pitching them a new whole like different social platform with different analytics and um, algorithms and all of that is so difficult. But I almost wonder if TikTok would be a great place to go to test out. And you guys know marketing is all about testing, but Heck you yeah. have to. I love yeah. hearing you say that all because day, we, we've been day. preaching that. that We preach that with the, the clients that we actually got to do TikToks. That's what we've been preaching. Like you have yeah. to be willing to test and any small business owner, you know, honestly, this actually goes up quite a bit bigger than small into mid business. And even at the enterprise level, yeah, they even Pepsi test stuff oh, like totally. at the highest level. So yes. you, that willingness to be able to test to me, that's why these platforms are so great because they're free before yes. you actually put any collateral together or have an agency. Right. The platform itself is a free download. Yep, it is. And all you have, I mean, it's, it's basically time versus money. Do you want to do it yourself? Do you want to invest? Do you want to boost posts? But I'll tell you, I've seen, I I actually shared a a TikTok video yesterday with my team because it was such a great example of a service-based company creating a video that was captivating and wasn't boring and that targeted their audience. But I've seen so many local, it might be two local chiropractors and they create videos cracking people's backs. And it's like, I don't know. It's just, and they put the microphone right up to it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. It's a whole vibe now. Like certain industries have been able to essentially carve out a TikTok niche and then create a hashtag around it. I've been sharing with clients the certain hashtags before I even get them onto actually making a talk. We try to get them to like digest some content for a couple of hours by giving them a couple of mm-hmm. hashtags to look at. Cause yeah. some of them, again, I, and I, you must experience this also. Like they think it's still the platform just for teenage dancing, which yes. it was that three years ago, but so yes. isn't where like, I don't care if you own a coffee shop. I don't care if it's a sandwich shop or you make custom cups like Miss Dutchy. There's an opportunity. And I don't just mean TikTok, obviously Instagram, even Facebook, as bloated as it is, Mm -hmm. there's opportunity in there. We get asked a lot about social media as as an umbrella, and it creates a much larger conversation where I go into all that. What 
are some of the questions you're getting the most frequently from small business owners? We're getting a lot of social media questions, a lot of video questions, some SEO, but I'll be honest, less than social media now. What are you hearing? People are like, hey, here's my competitor. How can I beat them? And they're like, I want to know what they're doing. Like there's a, a, speaking of tree trimmers, there's a tree trimmer that we're putting together a quote for. And he was like, here are two of my top competitors. This one is more so someone that I go up directly and they're just killing it. And they have had to turn away business and that's where I want to be. So what do I need to do to get there? So I've had those questions. We have had a lot about search engine optimization and how to kind of like get up and keep increasing because people are searching themselves and they can't be found. But you know, another one that's coming up is Google business profile and review marketing because people are like, oh, how can I come up in that maps listing? And I I don't see myself, I see everyone else. So it's, it's a little bit of those things, but it's also social media too. But the thing that I try to think about, and I, I tell my team this too, and they're doing a great job with it, is we need to do something different as an agency than what the consumer or the customer could do on their own. So it's not just about posting a video and a caption. We have to do that hashtag research. We have to see yep. what other people are doing and kind of take a deeper dive into that. So we've been doing more like shorter videos. We've been adding some GIFs in there, doing more uh, slider posts, polls on LinkedIn. So differentiating the content. I think that's incredible. And and again, your, your agency is able to do so many different services from the building to the SEO, to the social, to the strategy, to the automation. Is there a certain entry point for for someone looking for an agency of how they could find you? Obviously, SouthStreetMarketing.com is your website, but is there any other ways you're looking for people to find you? You also offer a ton of free resources on your website. Yeah, we offer a ton of great resources that are all free on our website. We also offer an initial call. So if someone's not really sure what they need, that you know, that's another question we get too. They're like, I'm not really sure what I need right now, but here are my goals and here's where I want to go. Like the other day I was talking with a client and they were like, hey, we want to, um, or actually they were like, we want to do some website updates. And I looked into their theme and you guys taught me this. So I have to thank you for that. Um, we looked into their theme and it hadn't been updated since 2016. And I oh, was wow. like, oh, that, that could be tough. <laughs> yeah. And it was hard because their website was built a year ago. And I'm like, oh, Who the heck oh, that? Yes. we always get bummed when we see that. It's just, you know. Yes, it's so horrible. So she wanted website updates. And I told her, I was like, listen, I didn't quote you for website updates because I would be doing you a disservice as the agency that you're looking to hire if I did not tell you that this website needs to be updated. And I showed her, I pulled up you know, the report, pulled up the theme, and sure enough, it said February 10th, 2016. And she was like, oh, well, we just redid it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter because it's no longer supported. (laughs) Right, you had to break her heart. (laughs) Yeah, I had to break her heart. And then, you know, she's not a marketing person. So she's like, well, I have to go back to my boss. And I was like, I'm happy to hop on a call. So what we did, I ended up, up putting some um, a pr- pricing together to update it, but the price was so close to just redoing a website. I And I told her that it's, it is our strong recommendation that you just redo your website. And that's so hard because they, they don't know. They, you know, they just paid someone to do their website and it was done a year ago and they, they think it's okay, but they wanted to make some tweaks and it's, it needs to be redone. No. And sometimes administering that bad news is is a necessary evil but one that is always uh, a little tough but it's honesty yeah that's 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 key in 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 our industry where yeah. obviously not being honest and telling somebody they're using a, a theme from 2016 or that you know is is the disservice that was put into the marketing industry the amount of honesty you've shared with us today i can't thank you enough i mean ever Much since we we've, we've known you years ago i've looked up to you for the way you built your business, handled your business, grown the type of clients that you continue to cultivate, your networking skills, your creative direction. I think you've you've impressed us since we've known you and we're excited to continue knowing you. So thank you so much uh, for being on Techspiration with us. Oh, thanks, you guys. That was so nice. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you invited me. And I'm I'm just so happy to be in your zone of influence because I I mean, I have to give you full credit for that one. 
because you guys taught me that. And I've, I've also learned so much just working with you. So I really, really appreciate it. Hey, I'm David. I'm one of your hosts here. My tech tip is a website, actually. It's called Fake Spot. So kind of sounds weird. But what the goal of this website is, is to help you find and get rid of fake reviews on a listing. I'll use an example. You're about to buy a cord on Amazon that has 5,000 five-star reviews. And you are just assured that this is just going to be an absolutely amazing cord. You drop the link from Amazon into Fake Spot. It then does a little AI technology, finds if any of those reviews might be fake or they seem scammy or whatever, that they're maybe not real. And all of a sudden, this five-star reviewed cord goes down to like two and a half, two stars. Because the honest truth is that there's a lot of fake reviews out there. And you're not going to be able to read 5,000 of them. So this tool is going to help you out. They do things like Best Buy. They do Walmart. They do a ton of locations where you can drop a product that you're about to buy, put it in there, and just double check. What a great way to make sure that what you're getting that you're actually looking at the right reviews. So it gives you a score and lets you know just the quality of it. Uh, it's saved me a handful of times already. I've also not listened to it, bought the product, and then had immediate regrets as it fell apart the next day. So I knew that, again, it helps. It, it definitely is, especially in the world of so many reviews. And when you have 10 items to pick from that look exactly the same, at least have something to point you in the right direction. For details and show notes about today's show, go to floridapodcastnetwork.com. And we want our community of Florida enthusiasts to grow. Join in with our superfans, the FPN Insiders, on Facebook, Clubhouse, and Good Pods. Just search for FPN Insiders. And of course, find us anytime at IWantClarity.com. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Florida Podcast Network. You'll find them at floridapodcastnetwork.com. Because we wear our sunglasses at night so we can, so we can market for you.